Hello viewers, welcome once again to our ongoing series entitled Mendelism and Beyond. In the past few lectures, as you must have noted, we have spanned an entire spectrum of the tetrad analysis, gene frequency combinations and along with the crossover frequencies, we have talked about the ordered and the unordered tetrad analysis which is helpful towards the creation of linkage maps. So, that means, uh, we are now ready to talk about the other complicated aspects of construction of the linkage maps. So, that means, with equipped with the basic knowledge of linkage, whether it is complete or incomplete linkage, the recombination frequencies, the crossover percentage and the differences between the two and of course, the tetrad analysis, uh, not to forget the consequences of crossing over and of course, the most important concept of the centimorgans or the map units they have all helped us to now understand how the distance between the genes which are located on the chromosome can be ascertained. So, that means, when we talk about the linkage map, uh, we have to be clear about certain uh, definitions to begin with. First point which comes to our mind is that is the map of the frequencies of recombination that is occurring between the markers on the homologous chromosomes during meiosis, is this map absolute? If we just measure the distance in centimorgans, then we find that there could be various other aspects of not merely a genetical map, we have to talk about the physical location also. So, that means, there is something which is called as a physical map and actually this physical map shows the actual physical location of genes and of course, the other DNA sequences of interest. Now, you should be very clear that in this case, we are not going to use the idea or the parameter of uh, the centimorgans because we are talking about the DNA sequences of our interest. So, naturally, we are talking in terms of the distance which is measured in terms of base pairs and you know from your textbook knowledge that each base pair is located say approximately 3.4 angstrom units apart. So, one can also construct a comparative map as you can see on your screens, it is a sort of a comparison of the linkage and the physical maps of the related species and naturally this is based on the shared markers and sequences respectively. On your screens you find for example, the, uh, the, the chromosome number 4 of rice and we have a, a physical map and then we have a DNA, a DNA sequencing map and there seems to be if you look carefully a whole lot of synteny as far as the positioning and the sequences of DNA uh, is concerned. Now, let us go back to our original example. If you remember in one of our previous lectures, we had talked about the distance between the two genes as they were located and this was approximately 3.1 centimorgans. If you remember viewers, 3.1 centimorgans would mean what percentage of a recombinants that we are talking about. Of course, we are talking about a percentage which is definitely less than 50 percent. So, that means these genes they are supposed to be linked. But then, when we choose a particular distance, uh, we should be now concerned about what this distance really means in terms of the strength of linkage. So, that means, greater would be the distance that is the physical separation between genes on a chromosome. Obviously, greater is going to be the genetic distance between them. So, in other words, there is some sort of a correlation between the genetic map distance and the physical distance. 
please understand viewers they are not synonyms so that means greater the physical distance more would be the chances of the actual physical exchange of the genetic material between the non sister chromatids of a pair of the homologous chromosomes but then one thing is clear that this correlation may not always be absolute because there are so many problems uh, on your screens you find a depiction of uh, a map which is between the two genes w and dm so more would be the distance more would be the chances of the cross uh, cross over to take place more number of chiasma more recombination frequency more cr cross over percentage and lesser the distance uh, you would find that these parameters would be less. So, that means uh, there is another problem which we are uh, faced with when we are comparing the male and the female say especially of uh, drosophila melanogaster uh, we find that the frequency of recombination is going to vary between members of the two sexes that means between females and males. This would also mean that within the same species we have to construct different map distances and their uh, genetic maps even though the physical chromosomes of both would be homologous and would have the same linear gene order. So, that means uh, there are other problems for example, male in drosophila has no recombination at all. You remember this aspect we had discussed in greater details when we were talking about the recombination frequency and the lecture on linkage and crossing over. So, that means if there is absolutely no recombination then what do we talk about the map distance? The map distance between any pair of genes uh, located on the same chromosome would be nothing but 0. So, although genes on different chromosomes will undergo independent assortment all right, but then within the genes that is their order they would be 0. So, that means we are now looking at so many departures uh, from the expected correlation in the physical maps because it was very easy uh, said than done that uh, uh, more is the distance more would be the uh, crossover percentage and more would be the uh, recombination frequency it may not always be true and uh, uh, we have to now think of various problems. The first problem which would come into our uh, consideration would be uh, what about eochromatin and heterochromatin because there will be many areas which would be genetically active and the others would be absolutely condensed and positively uh, heteropycnotic. And then in addition there is a problem of multiple crossovers. Let us look at them one by one. This correlation that we are talking about may fail sometimes even when we are applying it to a single chromosome what to talk of many chromosomes because we find that crossing over is definitely less frequent in the areas which are heterochromatic. So, that means within a given length of heterochromatin it would the uh, length would appear much shorter in the genetic map, but then the actual length of eochromatin is different. So, how can you get a realistic picture of the physical map? In our opinion, it would be in fact a distorted picture of the physical map because uh, the heterochromatin measurements are interfering. Let us take a concrete example. If we compare between the physical and the genetic maps in the chromosome number 2 in uh, Drosophila, you would find that the total of uh, the chromosome is not com coming to 100. Why? because we find that eochromatin area is there and in the middle the area which is surrounding the heterochromatin is uh, say to the tune of uh, 3 uh, centimorgans and uh, this area signifies that there is very very little recombination which is taking place in this heterochromatic area and now we are having the two genes in consideration which is PR and CN and they appear to be 3 map units apart, okay. but this is not enough. The genes P and CR are located in the eochromatin area, but then unfortunately they are very very near the junction with the, the heterochromatin. So, that means the whole scenario now changes 
as you can see on your screens the the distance between PR and the chromosomal tip happens to be 54.5 and uh, the distance between the CN uh, gene and the other tip happens to be 49.5. So, if we calculate all of them, if we sum up all of them together, it comes to 107 Morgan units or centimorgans. So, that means out of this entire length, why I said in the beginning we will get a distorted picture, heterochromatin as I said is 3. Uh, centimorgans, it is occupying 3 uh, centimorgans out of 107. So, that means that amounts to nearly 2.8 percent of the total map length, but then it constitutes surprisingly 25 percent of the physical length of the chromosome. So, you have now to appreciate how the physical length and the recombination frequency they are absolutely different. So, that means in euchromatic regions, if you are finding out a correlation between the physical distance and the distance in centimorgans, then this parameter may hold good. But then if it is too, if you are talking about too much of uh, heterochromatin, then there is going to be a lot of distortion. Then there is an additional problem of multiple crossovers. We were till now only mentioning okay, then there is a crossover, but then sometimes the multiple crossovers are such that it is absolutely impossible to even detect whether crossing over or recombination has taken place or not. In other words, recombination may not be detected, but then crossing over has taken place. So, that means this would happen only when genes are very, very far apart and uh, they would now uh, invite multiple uh, crossovers. So, that means map distance was only a distance that we were uh, trying to measure on the basis of number of physical exchanges, but then what about the actual recombination. So, this is also a problematic area. And uh, sometimes we find that some crossovers may not result in recombination at all as I was just mentioning. So, how would you detect uh, these cases? Because one crossover may sometimes cancel the effect of another. It has taken place, but then you cannot recognize. Uh, let us see uh, how the whole uh, scenario works. On your screens, you find that there are two crossovers which are occurring between the genes A and B, but then it is occurring between the same pair of chromatids. So, finally, what you find that uh, there is a uh, recombination between A and B genes, but on the diagram which is on the right, you find that all the four combinations which are made are non recombinants. Uh, for A and B and the other two also for small A and B. So, that means crossing over has taken place not one, but two, but then it depends on the position where it has taken place. This may go undetected and how would you include this in our calculations? We would see subsequently when we are talking about the three point crosses. So, that is in this case uh, crossing over has taken place, but then no new recombinants have been found. This is problematic. So, that means obviously the right estimate would never be there and uh, the observed recombination in this case, we will find that the value whatever we get is a definite underestimate of the true exchange frequency because uh, exchange has taken place, but we are not taking into account the frequency and the map distance between the two. And of course, we know that minimum recombination frequency between genes is 0 all right. So, that means uh, uh, we find that in higher organisms, there is another problem that crossing over is normally not possible in segments where, uh, where the genes are say nearly 10 centimeters apart. They have to be a little greater than that. So, that means uh, what about the data of the closely linked genes? We are going to use this data for making the uh, genetic maps and of course, the crossovers which are going to cancel each other and we will avoid them. So, that means maximum frequency of recombination between any two genes is 50 percent. This we have repeatedly said in many of our previous lectures no matter how the genes may be 50 percent is the upper limit 
and if the genes are located on the non homologous chromosomes and even if they assort independently they would still show a uh, 50% recombination which is the maximum one so that means uh, let us take uh, some other examples as to how the parental recombinations are going to come through if uh, let us see uh, we are going to talk about just one crossover which is taking place between the genes so that means okay if there is one uh, they are uh, far apart all right but then we find that one pair of recombinants is formed and one pair is again the the parental one so that means the p is to r that is parental is to recombinants is 1 is to 1 this is fine this is a normal situation but then what would happen if we have two crossovers because two crossovers would mean that there are perhaps four possibilities either the crossing over is a double crossing over two strand or it is three strand double crossing over or it is a three strand another way and the four strand in all the cases we would find that the ratio of parental to recombinants would vary from four is to zero to zero is to four let us look at uh, these situations uh, one by one for example if there is a two strand double crossover so that means you can see on your screens the the crossing over is taking place between strand two and three so that means we have now the same chromatids they are participating in the exchange the second uh, that is the double crossover also and there is no marker gene here which is now detectable and here we would find that p is four that means all of them are parental and none of them is a recombinant so in this case uh, crossing over has taken place you cannot uh, say that it has not but then the recombinants are not detectable there is another situation where we find that it is a three strand double crossover and you can see on your screens the participating ones are one two and three of the strands and now in this case the result is uh, the same as for a single exchange say for example uh, 1 2 3 they are participating the PR is 2 is to 2 that means if there was a normal crossing over uh, this also signifies the same result another situation would be that there is a three strand double uh, crossover here you can find that the strands 2 3 and 4 they are participating that is these three chromatids they are participating in the exchange and the result is again uh, p is to r is to 2 is to 2 so that means uh, again the story becomes complicated and it is only when you find that there is a four strand double crossover now in this case the chromatids are connected that were not involved in the first exchange and you would find that 1, 2, 3 and 4, all of 4 are participating and then the recombinants that we get is all the 4 recombinants and none of them now remains as a parental complement. So that means we can have so many situations. In other words, how do we quantify this whole situation of double crossing over? We are going to select the chromatids which are taking place in the exchange and uh, we want to see whether they are really contributing to double crossovers. So what are the expected proportions for these exchanges? Obviously we have just seen uh, figures before 1 by 4 are 4 strand doubles, 1 by 2 are the 3 strand doubles and another 1 by 4 are 2 strand doubles. So that means on an average we have to take an average it will be 4.1 uh, by 4 which has no exchange 1 by 2 2 crossovers and 1 by 4 4. So that means 2 recombinant chromatids are found among the 4 produced from meiosis with 2 exchanges between a pair of genes. So that means the figure comes to 2. So this is the same proportion which is obtained with a single exchange also between the genes. So the maximum of 50% recombination is obtained for any number of exchanges. Viewers, you must remember the, the, the proportion also always turns out to be 2 out of 4. Now let us take a, a uh, proper case study with the data uh, that to just to signify what I have just uh, explained. Suppose we are talking about meiosis in 
a hundred uogonia and we are interested to find out the uh, linkage and the recombination frequency between a and b so as to make a map so there is uh, there there's no cro cro crossover at some sites fine and uh, th there could be one or two or even more crossovers at some other sites and therefore what we get, get a data for no crossover one crossover or two crossovers or even more crossovers between a and b we find as you see on your screens uh, quantitatively uh, we have no crossovers in 70 cases single crossover in 20 cases double crossover in 8 and just two cases of triple crossover so you can see on your screens and and make your mind uh, immediately that out of 100 total of 100 70 are not showing any crossover at all so that means there's no question of having a recombinant here now as I mentioned earlier, there could be a single crossover and yet no recombinant. But then uh, for the time being, we are talking in terms of 70 and 30. So that means uh, the genetic map distance between the two loci A and B uh, uh, from our calculations of the data, we find that the average number of crossovers is 0 0.42. How did we arrive at this figure? We found that out of these total 100 meiotic uh, products we found that one crossover two crossover and three crossovers they they were multiplied the average number and uh, and the 70 out of 100 was also included here which was multiplied by zero so the total came out to be 0 0.42 now this would mean that can you exactly see these exchanges no we can't see these exchange points on a chromosome but we can definitely find out that they do exist and how do we find their presence obviously it is on the basis of the recombination of the alleles that are uh, flanking or that are located uh, around these points so that means the underlying important conclusion that we arrive at is that counting of the recombined chromosomes is going to give you the number of crossover exchange points. So basically it is the recombination of chromosomes. You remember viewers the first genetic map was given by Alfred uh, Stutevant and he observed two point crosses and he started the marker order as you can see on your screens which is a historical picture of his uh, work and he talked about the different parameters of the uh, genetic map. Uh, let us take another uh, example of a two point test cross because uh, here the, uh, the it is a two point cross and we find that uh, wild type drosophila female is crossed with a male homozygous which has two mutations. What are these mutations? The small vg is for short wings and the small b is for black body. So that means this cross would tell us that all the F1 flies would have long wings and would have a grey body. That means the dominant and the recessive um, uh, relationship holds. Uh, looking at your screens, you would find that the two parents of uh, Drosophila would give rise in the, uh, that is the F1 generation, they would give rise to long wings and the grey body. Now, the F1 females are, uh, were test crossed with the vestigial black males that means small VG and uh, B double heterozygotes and it was found that the results had four phenotypes. Two of them were abundant and the other two were rare. Obviously, the abundant phenotypes were parental and the rare phenotypes were the recombinants. Let us try to find out how rare were these uh, recombinants. We found that the vestigial and black genes are linked. Why are we, uh, do we say so? Because their frequency is less than 50% of the total progeny. And the second conclusion we arrive at is that they are on the same chromosome. So that means the average number of crossovers in F2 between small vg and b would be uh, determined so as to find out the distance between them. 
on your screens viewers you will find that this is the data which was obtained in the four progeny of the test cross and we find that 820 were parental out of 1000 and 180 were recombinants and uh, that means it was 415 plus 405, 92 and 88 taken together. So, that means how do we uh, give the notations? We say the number of crossovers for each class we take is uh, first to be included in parenthesis and then the other number denotes the frequency of that class and the average number also includes those progeny which do not add to any uh, chromosome uh, crossovers to this data. So, if we look at the screens, it comes out to be 820 p plus 180 recombinants total is 1000. Recombination frequency is obviously uh, between the uh, r that is 180 by 1000 is equal to 0 0.18. So, we have recombinants 0 0.18 and non recombinants we have 0 0.82 fine it means that the the vg and b have a recombination frequency of 18% which is equivalent to 0 0.18 so we conclude that they are located 18 centimeter uh, centimorgans apart on the chromosome uh, by the formula of the number of recombinants by total number of test cross progeny into 100 would give us the recombination frequency or the map units. In our next lecture, we would be talking about the uh, three point cross uh, considering the advantages and the disadvantages of the two point cross which we have just mentioned. Thank you.